so hello everyone uh, welcome to this new session so in our last sessions we have completed with the first module of control system right that are the, that are, those are the basic concepts so now in this module we are going to study uh, some uh, basics about some of the basics about rules for block reduction okay so what do you mean by this block block reduction so let's uh, try to study this so this is the topic which you are studying rules for block diagram reduction okay before that uh, let's uh, start with few of the rules of block diagram reduction in order to uh, reduce the uh, blocks that is in this module what we would be having is uh, they would be giving some of the block diagrams in that we need to reduce it we need to reduce that block diagram to the simplest form okay by using few of the terminologies called as summing points this is a summing point this way the, these are the summing points represented and uh, there are few more uh, uh, what to say uh, expressions or uh, expressions those are called as takeoff points okay these and all are the takeoff points that and all i'm going to explain you right now so now let's see what are the rules for block diagram reduction so first thing is any complicated system is brought into its simplest form its transfer function can be calculated by, by using the canonical form of closed loop system. So by this, we have few of the rules here now. Let's see, the rule one is the associative law. That is, consider two summing points directly connected to each other. So this is the input side and this is the output side here. So here, these are the two summing points as you can see, uh, this and this. If there are two summing points directly connected to each other, then we can change the position of the above two summing points. The output remains the same. For example, if uh, this, this is a summing point here, R1 and R2, and we have here R1 and R3. Here, if we exchange these two things, that is R in place of R3, if we write R2, in place of R2, if we write R3, the output would, re would be remaining the same. So, and one more note is that there should not be any takeoff point or intermediate block between the two summing points. This point you need to remember, okay? Yeah. So now let's go for rule number two, that is for blocks in series. So what you should do in, uh, when the blocks are in, uh, some of the input blocks are in series. That is the figure of the blocks which are connected in series get modified with each other, that is. So here we can see that in this single path, we have three blocks named as G1, G2 as well as G3, okay. And this is the input side and this is the output side here, okay. If like this the blocks are connected in series, the first thing what we can do is we can reduce these three blocks into a single block and we, by, we can reduce these three blocks into a single block by just multiplying these three terms, that is G1, G2, G3. See, this is the simplified block after uh, we multiply this term. So whenever we, we see in a particular uh, block diagram, uh, in order to reduce that, if uh, some of the block diagrams are in series, what we should do is we need to multiply them. Okay, so this is the simplified block diagram here, as you can see. So output in both cases remains the same. Okay, so one more note is that if there is a takeoff or a summing point in between the blocks, it cannot be together connected in series. Okay, yeah. So the third rule here, rule number three, again this is very important for blocks in parallel. So now for rule number two, we have seen that for blocks in series, right? So now let's see for blocks in parallel, what's the rule, okay? Yeah. See if the blocks are in parallel, such as uh, G1, G2 and G3 here are in parallel, right? So for that, in that case, what we need to do is there is a common summing point for these three things. Whenever they, the blocks are in parallel and they have a common summing point, what we can do is we can uh, directly add these three, okay? We can simplify this block and we can write it as G1 plus G2 plus G3. Okay, this is plus okay here. Yeah, G1 plus G2 plus G3. In this case also output remains the same. Which can be replaced by only one block with the takeoff point. Okay, so again the output remains the same. So the blocks which are in parallel gets added up. Okay, so whenever we see like this, like when uh, the blocks are in uh, parallel, what we need to do is we need to add them up. Okay, and uh, convert it into a single block having the terms G1 plus G2 plus G3, okay? So this is the simplified block here. 
with the input as well as output okay r of s c of s so this is the input and output so this is the simplified expression so when the blocks are in parallel okay so similarly have, uh, you can see that the blocks are in series also so in series what we need to do we need to multiply parallel what we need to do we need to add them up okay okay so now let's directly go to rule number four that is shifting a summing point behind the block okay so here this there is a summing point here so in order if in, in a block if we want to shift this summing point uh, behind the block so what we need to do is the output must remain the same after shifting a summing point so what we need to do is here the output in this case is uh, we have r into g plus this is the summing point y right so here the output here is r into g plus y so if we want to shift the summing point uh, behind the block or left side of the block okay what we need to do is uh, just shift it right now i have just shifted here and here the output should remain the same in such a way we need to shift the summing point and uh, along with the summing point we need to add some of the expressions here as you can see here uh, when i shift this uh, summing point to this side what would be happening so here it, this is r plus x so this is a summing point right common these two would be getting added up that is r plus x okay into g since the r plus x and g these are in series so they would be getting multiplied is equal to the output c of s so if we simplify this what we would be getting r plus x into g rg plus x g is equal to the output c of s initially which we have assumed it as rg plus y so equate it while equating we would be getting one uh, term called as y is equal to x g or we can say x is equal to 1 by g into y okay so this indicates that so signal y must be multiplied by 1 by g in order to keep the output same so what we need to do whenever we are shifting the summing point behind the block we need to add this block of 1 by g okay whenever we shift the summing point behind the block what we need to do the out in order to in order to the output to remain the same what we need to do when we shift the summing point behind the block here in, along with the summing point path what we need to add we need to add a block of 1 by g okay so this is for the case where summing point is shifted behind the block so now next rule says that shifting a summing point beyond the block that is right side in front of the block okay so here in this figure initially we can see that summing point is behind the block so now what we need to do we need to shift this summing point in front of the block okay so here again the initial output here you can see that r this is the input and this is the another input y these both are getting added up r plus y and r plus y and g are in series so r plus y into g okay so now the output must remain the same after shifting a summing point beyond the block so what we need to do uh, Uh, when we shift this uh, summing point after shifting what we get is uh, after shifting uh, the summing point is equal to uh, r into g these are in series plus x so this is our modified output after shifting the summing point okay so now what we need to do is rg plus x is equal to c of s that is initial value of c of s we have assumed it as r plus y into g again if we simplify it for x what we would be getting x is equal to y into g so it indicates that the signal y must be multiplied with the transfer function of block beyond which summing point is to be shifted so in this what we need to do whenever we are we want to shift the summing point to the right hand side of the block we need to add a block of in g whenever we want to shift the summing point to the left hand side of the block what we need to do we need to add a block of 1 by g okay yeah whenever shift it to the left hand side for right hand side what we need to do we need to multiply by g okay yeah so these are this is the fifth rule so now the sixth rule is that we need to shift a takeoff point behind the block till now we have discussed about summing point now let's see what is this concept of takeoff point so this is the takeoff point here so if you want to shift this takeoff point behind the block what we need to do is the same thing uh, it's the reverse process of uh, summing point. What we what we were doing for summing point behind the block, we were uh, uh, adding a block of one by g, right? 
So in this case, shift uh, we, in order to shift the takeoff point beyond the block, we need to add a block of g. Okay. Same similar goes to rule seven. These explanations are all not required. Uh, similar goes to rule seven. That is shifting a takeoff point beyond the block. That is in front of the block. So in front of the block, what we were doing for in case of summing point, we were uh, multiplying it by g, right? Uh, we were multiplying the summing point by g so in this case what we are going to, what we need to do is reverse that is we need to multiply by 1 by j okay here we have c 1 by j okay so here see this this takeoff point was initially here this got shifted here so after shifting we are uh, adding an extra block of 1 by g and y in order to uh, in order for output to remain the same we are doing this process okay so here the, again for the rule number six also the same thing see here uh, when we shift this uh, takeoff point to the right hand side what we are getting we need to multiply this by g okay for rule seven we need to multiply it by one by g okay so now rule eight this is a very important rule again that is removing a minor feedback loop okay so what is this minor feedback loop so whenever we have this kind of uh, block here see so we have an input a summing point uh, feedback block that is g of s and output and along with that from output to this summing point we have a, a block called as h of s so whenever we have this kind of blocks that is for example let us consider a summing point along with that we have a block of uh, g1 and an output and from that we have uh, getting this to a summing point and here one more block is considering uh, that of h1 so you know when, when we have this kind of uh, blocks we can say that this block corresponds to a minor loop okay minor loop so in order to neglect this minor loop we have one formula that is g of s divided by 1 plus or minus g of s into h of s okay this plus or minus indicates that whenever here we have plus sign we need to add uh, we need to change here 1 minus g of s into h of s whenever we have a minus sign we need to say g of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s okay so this is the basic formula when in order to replace this minor loop uh, into a single block that is g of s divided by 1 plus or minus g of s into h of s in this case what we would be having that is uh, g1 divided by 1 plus or minus g1 into h1 so in this way we are going to replace this into a single block okay yeah so these are the basic eight rules we have few more few two of the other critical rules as well that i'm going to discuss in the upcoming sessions so that's all for this video this uh, set of rules are very important in order to understand the problems so from the next session i'm going to start solving problems related to this block diagram reduction okay so that's all please like share subscribe thank you